Chapter 51 The Saturn moons without any axis rotation. Natural life exists only on the opposite side of the moon. The moons as post-schools of Saturn and pre-schools of the ring and the purely spiritual life. Closing words. Regarding the moons, they have the same relationship to their planet as does our moon to the Earth. Only there is a gradation through the moons, which of course cannot exist on Earth because the Earth has only one moon. As far as the movement of the moons is concerned, they always turn the same side half towards their planet. For this reason, their habitableness is twofold, namely a spiritual and a natural one. Therefore, the opposite side of every moon facing the planet is inhabited by human beings and animals, and has vegetation, water and air, and everything that is necessary to support natural life. Human beings that live naturally on the back of the moon are of course considerably smaller than those on the planet, and on the smaller moons they do not even have the size of the people on Earth. On the larger, outermost three moons, the people are taller than on Earth. The natural human beings on the moons are in constant spiritual contact with the actual Saturnian human beings, so that the spirits of those Saturnian human beings who did not prepare themselves during their natural lifespan to reach one of the rings must therefore first endure the spiritual life of one or more moons in accordance with their level of development before they can be accepted on the lowest ring. What do these human beings do on the moons? And what kind of Saturnian spirits come to a moon? Spirits that come to a moon are selfish and heathenish. Those that worshipped and revered the ring as a deity throughout their Saturn life. On every moon they first appear on the natural side and, through their bodies, they view that which is natural and live there as natural human beings. But they cannot see the ring, which formerly was their idol. When, through this, they have been weaned off the ring, and have also lost their planet, then they move to the side of the moon facing the planet, from whence they can see the planet and the ring as an almost concrete body, through this, it becomes gradually clear to them, while they are being instructed by other higher spirits that come to them, that the ring is not at all some kind of deity or the residence of a deity, nor is it the pathway upon which the great spirit walks above the heavens. But they can see with their own eyes that it is only a materially solid celestial body, which is placed around the actual planet. And this ring has been created by the Great Spirit, so that the spirits of the departed human beings on that planet are prepared on the ring for a higher life, of which they thus far have no idea. When these spirits have learned this, through teachings as well as through their own intuition, 
they soon completely abandon their false beliefs and make inquiries as to the abode of the Great Spirit. It is pointed out to them that they will receive this information on the rings. They have completely approached the purely spiritual state and finally also have completely passed over into that state. After this, they experience a longing for the ring, but yearn more so for a purely spiritual state. When that happens, they are immediately transferred to the ring. Now you have the answers to the previous questions. But in time, this question might arise. Why are seven moons required for this purpose? Could not one moon fulfill such a simple task? That would be true if they were spirits of a different nature. Then one moon would suffice. However, the Saturnian spirits have their seat under one knee in the great man of creation, or the great cosmic man. Note 1. The great cosmic man, or great man of creation, means the great transformed primary spirit of Lucifer. For further details, see Robert Blum from Hell to Heaven and The Fundamental Principles of Life by Jacob Lorber. And that is more than enough of a reason. Because the legs are the outermost foundation of life, and on the leg itself, again, the joints. If, for example, the body sustains an injury to an arm, or to the skin, or anywhere on the body, the body can still stand upright and move around to look for help. If, however, one of the legs, especially one of the joints, sustains a severe injury, then the whole body is inhibited, and the person will probably fall to the ground, unable to move, and therefore unable to seek help. And that is the reason why the legs of every human being are built stronger than all the other parts of the body. The inhabitants of Saturn represent the most important part of the leg under the knee of the great man in creation, also called the great cosmic man. And you have already heard of this great spirit being on other occasions. For this reason, Great attention must be paid regarding the spirits of the Saturnian human beings, and that applies to every single spirit as to which one of the seven primary spirits, note 2, the seven primary spirits of God are 1. Love, 2. Wisdom, 3. The effective will of God, 4. The order, 5. Divine seriousness, 6. Patience, and 7. Mercy. Each of these spirits originates from the previous one. For more information, refer to the Great Gospel of John and the Fundamental Principles of Life by Jacob Lorber. Out of which every spirit consists is in the most dangerous position. And this is the purpose for the existence of the seven moons, so that in one or the other moon, one or the other of the seven primary spirits can be calmed down and brought in to the appropriate order with the remaining six primary spirits. From this explanation, you will be able to gather why this planet was assigned seven moons. 
Now you know everything there is to know regarding these moons. Their distances from the planet and their size was mentioned at the beginning of this book. Therefore, this concludes the descriptions of the moons. Since we have learned about the planet, the ring as well as the moons, we shall conclude this work. Some of you might still ask, what benefit or purpose does this whole message about Saturn serve? I will answer as follows. First, each of you who has read this message should take this example as a serious reminder of how completely different the inhabitants of this planet respect my will than do the inhabitants on Earth. Secondly, you should gather from the entire message how my love, wisdom, might and fatherly solicitude reaches considerably farther than the arrogant human intellect's foolish sense can conceive. Thirdly, this observation should guide people on earth to the deepest humility, from which a human being should see who he is and who I am, their God, Creator and Father. He should look into his heart and contemplate on the greatest blessing and compassion that has been bestowed upon him, and that I, the only Lord and Creator of these miraculous works, consented to choose the earth, this dirty little planet, as the birthplace of my infinite love, compassion and mercy, and consequently all the fullness of my divine being. For this reason, I will allow you to inspect the sun. Note 1. Book the natural sun, as well as a few other planets. It will not be described in so much detail. Although brief, it will be sufficient. And with this promise I conclude this communication. My blessings, my love, mercy and compassion be with this promise. Amen.